When choosing a lens for vlogging, remember these options. You gotta keep in mind the price of the lens, how well it deals with light, the speed of the autofocus, the framings of the millimeters, the look or the bokeh and depth of field, the weight of the lens, and the stabilization. And when you're buying a lens for your vlogging, you wanna consider the look, which I am calling the depth of field and how much bokeh you can get in. Obviously, that has to do with framing, it has to do with light, it has to do with other things, um, and it has to do with cost too, uh, because the lenses that let in the most light, which allow you to have the depth of field, they usually cost more. This is a particular look right here, and we're gonna switch to a different look that's allowed by the 35RF 1.8 lens. And now we're gonna switch. So let's have a talk. This lens has a totally different look. And so I'm in a darkened um, driveway uh, for a loading dock. And so you can see there's some nice bokeh happening here. But watch when I move. You can see there's a totally different look created by the depth of field for the lens. And the other lens, the 10 to 18, doesn't give you that. So I'll switch back so we can see what that looks like. All right, everybody, here's the same look at the 10 to 18 at the same location, far back. Uh, so you can take a look at what this looks like. I'm gonna move out of the way. And I'm back. And my elbows hurt and that's rat droppings over there. I'm sure of it. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Anyways, this is the 10 to 18. You can see what it does with the bokeh. Probably nothing. <laughs> My phone said I'm glad you're back. All right, here we are at Heritage Park in Fullerton. And we're just gonna talk about how you should think about purchasing a lens for vlogging. One of the characteristics that you need. Keep in mind when you purchase a lens, and that is framing. All right, one thing you gotta remember when you're choosing a lens for vlogging is the framing. So this means the, the millimeters, like this lens is a 10 to 18, and so I can get a wide shot like this and you can get the whole background. I have a little bit of a zoom, uh, and so I can get in like this and you have some of the background. But you'll see when I switch to the 35, it's a much different story based on the framing that the lens offers. All right, and this is the same shot on uh, the 35RF lens. So you can see, like I get a little bit of the background, but it's cropped in and you lose some of the story. So remember if the background is part of the story, the wider the angle that you use, um, you're gonna be able to incorporate more of that. All right, let's go, let's go to the next place. Another thing you have to consider when buying your lens for your vlogging is the speed of the lens for autofocus. So if you're jumping in and out of the frame, or moving the camera to show something and moving back to you, you probably care, as your viewers do, whether you're in focus or not when the time comes. I found while testing this that I actually couldn't make the 10 to 18 lens mess up because it was at f5, and everything practically was in focus that, um, that mattered. So I jump in and out of the frame, and it was always in focus because the depth of field was big enough uh, for that. But definitely when I do the, the RF 35 1.8 lens, there is the potential that there'll be a second or two where it's trying to find focus. So I'm gonna demonstrate that right now and we'll see how it does. But the 10 to 18, it's money every time. I've never had an issue in all this test uh, for this vlog. What's up YouTube? No, I'm just kidding around. Let's see what the RF 35 1.8 does when I hop out of frame. And focus, 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 focus. So. There's a little bit of lag there, but it's honestly a pretty quick lens. So I'm pretty happy with this, but this one's amazing with focus. Boosh. All right, you also have to keep in mind stabilization. So your lens can come with image stabilization. All right, now we're gonna check out the stabilization and how the 10 to 18 performs going downstairs. So it's hard to vlog and talk going downstairs, but we're checking out the stabilization of the lens. And yeah. So let's compare the clips. The 10 to 18 has stabilization, as does the 35, which I'm using right now. And so that's really important, especially if you're going to be climbing stairs or moving a lot. So uh, I'm not usually outside, I'm usually inside with controlled lighting. And so light has been a struggle from switching from lens to lens. 
And so um, we're going to talk about how do you decide which lens to choose based on the light that you uh, have available and how well your lens does with light. All right, let's go. All right, so I'm in here in kind of a dark interior hallway uh, leading into a courtyard. And so you have to keep in mind how well your lens does with light. And so if you're going to be filming in a controlled situation and maybe you have all the studio lighting you want, then that's uh, something to consider. But in this case, I'm outdoors vlogging and maybe that's more typical with vlogging. And so you're going to have to be aware how well does your lens perform with light. So this is the 1018 in an indoor hallway uh, for this hotel here in Fullerton. And now let's switch to the other lens. So I'm just going to move down into this hallway and the darker gets, you can see that the lens performance based on how much light it brings in matters. All right, so here we are in another location and uh, this beautiful Fullerton, this is a, some sort of wash or water drainage uh, system. And so what we're gonna talk now, about now is weight. So apropos this is, <laughs> I am above this drop off here. And so the weight of your lens matters when you are vlogging because you are literally holding your camera at arm's length. You're gonna pay a price if it's a heavy lens. So let's switch to the 1018, see what the difference is. All right, so this is the uh, 1018. I have it backed out all the way to 10 millimeters, a lot more background. But the key thing we're talking about here is weight. This is 8.4 ounces compared to the 10 ounces. Not a lot, but if you're vlogging for a lot of time and holding the lens out, the weight does matter. So keep that in mind. How heavy is the lens that you're gonna choose for vlogging? The lighter, the better for me. All right, so you gotta remember cost. So that's one of the chief factors. Maybe that's the bottom line for you. But this lens right here, the 10 to 18 is $179, $200. And the RF 35 1.8 is 449. So it's twice as expensive. So that's something to keep in mind. How much is your vlogging worth? based on the cost and all the other features that the lens brings with it. Keep in mind that the cost of your lens, this one, the 1018, is like $179. It's great, um, great value. And it's probably the lens I would choose in this shootout uh, when we're comparing all these features. It, it just wins more of the time. And so that's something to keep in mind. And um, so honestly, this lens, the 1018, it's cheaper. It's uh, better in a whole host of reasons. It's tied with weight, tied with stabilization. But this lens really does outperform the RF35. Even though that lens is uh, amazing, uh, it is not the one I would choose for vlogging. So until next time, we are out, YouTubes. We are out. Thanks to BDV for special cinematographical uh, helps and assistance. My hand hurts. I don't vlog. My hand hurts. Shoot out over. Phone. <laughs> My phone said I'm glad you're back. <laughs>